Good morning, Creekside. My name's Olivia. Some of you guys haven't met me yet. You also know me as Excited Motions Lady. But before I was that, I was actually the second grade teacher with our kiddos. Now, um, before shelter in place, I got the privilege to spend time with them for two years. And I didn't get to see them graduate, and I was so disappointed about it. Um, my next step, I'm moving off to college in January, so if you are looking to be the second grade teacher, we have sign-ups happening in the lobby, or if you'd like to fulfill any other position, we're really hoping to rebuild our team so we can reopen our kids' rooms. But for today, I'm really excited to talk with you guys and share Isaiah chapter 40 with our kiddos. Now, Mrs. McDonald says that the word of God is sometimes like a mirror, and it's sometimes like a window. Now, the kiddos have some wiki sticks in their goodie bags, so that's something that you guys can make those shapes if you're interested. And if you haven't gotten a goodie bag, go ahead and raise your hand right now, and one of our helpers will give you some wiki sticks, because why not? <laughs> when we put our faith in something other than God, anything, it is referred to as an idol. Now, God's word is like a mirror because it shows us things about ourselves that we wouldn't know otherwise. Like last week with the funnel, when we found out that sometimes we put our trust in the wrong thing. God's message to us is to stop. Stop. Stop turning to idols to save you. Turn to me instead. This week's passage is less like a mirror and more like a window because it shows us a glimpse into heaven and tells us things about God that we wouldn't otherwise know. And Isaiah 40 is a big window. Through it, we see God trying to comfort his people with good news. After all your sin, I love you. Even though your idols are weak, I am strong. I will take care of you. In fact, the only commands in the whole chapter are behold your God, lift up your eyes and see. The rest of the chapter is just a series of questions and answers that God uses to show his people just how amazing he really is. And boy, is he amazing. This chapter is like a Thanksgiving feast crammed full of all the very best truths about God. And I only have time to talk about one today. The one that I picked is all about measurements. I would love to grab some volunteers. Can I have a kid and parent duo to take some measurements? Come on up. Can I have one more volunteer? Come on up. I need a mom and a kiddo or a dad and a kiddo. So we're going to take measurements to figure out how tall you are. Now, most of the time we're using rulers or measuring tapes to figure out how tall we are. But back in Isaiah's day, they used their hands. So I want you, each of you to take a close look at your parent's hand. And I want you to guess how many hands tall you are. When you have a guess, go ahead and write it down on our little pieces of paper that we have here. And then parents, I want you to take the true measurements and figure out how many hands tall they are. <laughs> so when you write down your guesses and figure out what your actual measurements are, you can go ahead and sit down. While they're doing that, I have a question for the rest of you. How many hands wide is the universe? That's a trick question because you have to consider what kind of hands that you're talking about. If you're talking about really tiny hands, like in those memes where you stick it on the edge of your finger, that's going to be a lot of hands to fill up the universe. But what if you have one really, really big hand? Maybe can you guess where I'm going with this? <laughs> so let's talk about what verse 12 in Isaiah 40 says. It asks us, who has measured the oceans by using the palm of his hand? Who has used the width of his hand to mark off the sky? Now, kids, think about this. How much water is there? Or how vast is the sky? How many stars are there in the sky? That's a lot. It's a lot. So whose hand is big enough? It's only God. Only God's hand is big enough to capture all of the sky, all of the water, and, fortunately, all of our problems with it. It only takes one of God's hands to hold all the water in the earth 
to capture the vastness of the sky. You got your guess for me? Thank you so much. You guys can go ahead and sit down. Thank you. How many hands tall was he? Did he measure him? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So let's say he was five hands tall. Okay. Thank you. So Ainsley's guess was that she was three hands tall, three hands tall, but she was six. And Sam's guess that was he was eight hands tall, but he was actually closer to six or seven. How does it make you feel that you have a God on your side that is the kind of God that offers to help you with anything that you trust him to put in his hands? Does it give you comfort, hope, strength? It does me. 